senator, one of the strongest proponents of the original Koika bill, in fact. And I asked him why, despite being such a progressive, despite giving a speech in favor of civil liberties, why he was supporting a bill that would censor the internet. And you know, that typical politician smile he had suddenly faded from his face, and his eyes started burning this fiery red. And he started shouting at me. He said, those people on the internet, they think they can get away with anything. They think they can just put anything up there, and there's nothing we can do to stop them. They put up everything. They, they put up our nuclear missiles, and they just laugh at us. Well, we're going to show them. There's got to be laws on the internet. It's got to be under control. <laughs> now, as far as I know, nobody has ever put up the U.S.'s nuclear missiles on the internet. I mean, it's just not something I've heard about. But that's sort of the point. He wasn't having a rational concern. Right? It was this irrational fear that things were out of control. Here was this man, a United States senator, and those people on the internet, they were just mocking him. They had to be brought under control. Things had to be under control. And I think that was the attitude of Congress. And just to seeing that fire in that senator's eyes scared me, I think... Just like their mind control. scared a lot of people. They saw this wasn't the attitude of a thoughtful government trying to resolve trade-offs in order to best represent its citizens. This was more like the attitude of a tyrant. Psychopath! And so the citizens fought back. The wheels came off the bus pretty quickly after that hearing. First, the Republican senators pulled out, and then the White House issued a statement opposing the bill. And then the Democrats, left all alone out there, announced they were putting the bill on hold, so they could have a few further discussions before the official vote. And that was when, as hard as it was for me to believe, after all this, we had won. The thing that everyone said was impossible, that some of the biggest companies in the world had written off as kind of a pipe dream, had happened. We did it. We won. And they killed him. And then we started rubbing it in. <laughs> You all know what happened next. Wikipedia went black, Reddit went black, Craigslist went black, the phone lines on Capitol Hill flat out melted. Members of Congress started rushing to issue statements, retracting their support for the bill that they were promoting just a couple days ago. It was just ridiculous. I mean, th there's a chart from the time that captures it pretty well. It says something like January 14th on one side and has this big long list of names supporting the bill and then just a few lonely people opposing it. And then on the other side, it says January 15th. And now it's totally reversed. Everyone is opposing it. Just a few lonely names still hanging on in support. I mean, this really was unprecedented. Don't take my word for it, but ask former Senator Chris Dodd, now the chief lobbyist for Hollywood. He admitted after he lost that he had masterminded the whole evil plan. And he told the New York Times, He'd never seen anything like it during his many years in Congress. And everyone I've spoken to agrees. The people rose up and they caused a sea change in Washington. Not the press, which refused to cover the story. Just coincidentally, their parent companies all happened to be lobbying for the bill. Not the politicians, who are pretty much unanimously in favor of it. And not the companies who had all but given up trying to stop it and decided it was inevitable. It was really stopped by the people the people themselves. They killed the bill dead. So dead that when members of Congress propose something now that even touches the internet, they have to give a long speech beforehand about how it is definitely not like SOPA. <laughs> so dead that when you ask congressional staffers about it, they groan and shake their heads like it's all a bad dream they're trying really hard to forget. So dead that it's kind of hard to believe this story. That it's coming back. It's hard to remember how close it all came to actually passing. It's hard to remember how this could have gone any other way. But it wasn't a dream or a nightmare. It was all very real. And it will happen again. Sure, it will have yet another name and maybe a different excuse and probably do its damage in a different way. But make no mistake. The enemies of the freedom to connect have not disappeared. The fire in those politicians' eyes hasn't been put out. Yeah. There are we're, a lot of people, we're getting a lot ready of powerful to put it people, out. who want to clamp down on the internet. 
And to be honest, there aren't a whole lot who have a vested interest in protecting it from all of that. Even some of the biggest companies, some of the biggest internet companies, to put it frankly, would benefit from a world in which their little competitors could get censored. We can't let that happen. That was Aaron Swartz speaking last year here at the Freedom to Connect conference. This past January, he took his own life. Um, our guest today, uh, Darcy Brenner, so is they be say. the After Aaron address this year. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we'll also be joined a lot of people uh, taking their lives these Republican days. Republican staffer on the Hill who was asked to write a paper about copyright law. They didn't like what he had to say. Stay with us. They don't like anything that exposes them. <laughs>